guys on Phil Brown here as I'm bringing you another message on missions so for February we decided we would look at missions as a topic of focus for the month and hey what beautiful settings I'm in yes for the thought I'd have some mountains for this message you'll see why shortly so my message today is titled why missions why should we go on missions why are missions important and why it should be important to us and the answer is found in the final chapters on all four of the Gospels and I'm going to look first at the first three Gospels and let's go to Matthew 28 verse 19 therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So here Matthew is saying, go make disciples of where? All nations. You know, so that's where mission comes in. We are, to get to all nations, we need to go somewhere, don't we? Let's read Mark, Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Wow, every creature? Wow, that uh, blows my mind. Uh, um, and Luke 24 says this, verse 46 and 47, he said to them, thus it is written, and th thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. So there we have the first three Gospels. All of them mention either all nations or the world. And I think a lot of us would actually be quite com comfortable with what it says in Mark and what it says in Luke. Because in Mark and Luke it says we must preach to all nations or we must go into the world and preach. Um, and look, and that kind of gives a lot of us an out. It doesn't give me an out because I'm actually a preacher. But, you know, if we're not preachers, then, well, we, we're kind of excused. Well, we're not. Because if you look at Matthew, it says this, go and make disciples of all nations. Now, you may not be a preacher, but you can make disciples. In fact, in Zion, we've been on this journey where we're encouraging us to become disciples and to make disciples and that's why we've moved to having a real focus on table and connect groups over the last year or so because we believe that all people can make disciples and that if you're a Christian one you need to be a disciple but two you have to make disciples and that's a journey as a church that we're going on and are on um, but here it's not limited to just what's happening in Te Awamutu in the Waipa area no and uh, if we're looking at it in a missional statement, it's go make disciples to all nations. So that's the short answer is to why missions? Because Jesus said so. And how then do we make disciples? How do we do what Jesus taught us to do to make disciples of all nations? And here I want to talk a little bit of my own uh, missional story or my own story so far actually you see there's a prophetic calling on my life to be a missionary to four missions and that was received many many years ago and I've done some short-term missions which I'm going to talk about now um, but in actual fact I don't think that's the end of it um, I had a word several years ago now when my babies were just young my kids were just young and saying that the season you're in now is to raise your family um, but there's a time coming when God's going to call you back to mission. So my kids are about to leave home in a few years. So let's see what happens then. So my mission story so far. Um, and that's why I've got the mountains of Nepal in the background, because that's where I've been. Nepal's actually a nation that is quite close to my heart. I've been there 
four times now. Um, I went once before I was a Christian, um, just as a tourist. Then I went twice back in 1999. Um, put a photo of me on my missions trips um, just behind me and you can see how young I was. Gosh, anyway, and so I did a couple of trips uh, 20 odd years ago and I actually went back recently for a work training course um, about four years ago, five years ago. Um, so I've been to Nepal many times and it's a, it's a beautiful country. Um, it's a big country of contrast. You've got the tourist areas which are lovely, uh, but then you've got a whole lot of poverty and poor areas. Um, uh, there's a Christian church, but it's struggling. The Buddhism and Hinduism are the main religions there. Um, but you know, God has a passion for that nation, and there's many people that go to Nepal serving God. It's a bit hot here, so I'm going to take my hat off again. Um, but you see, you're not actually going to get to a country like Nepal as a preacher. No, you see, um, they have a Hindu background and if you want to go and live in Nepal and communicate the gospel to Nepal, you can't do it as a preacher. However, it just so happens I'm a veterinarian and so my short term missions journey began with an organisation called Christian Veterinary Mission and what they do is they have veterinarians um, all around the world um, who want, want to go into places to communicate Christ to these people and as a veterinarian you can actually do that and uh, while I was in Nepal I stayed with a, a lovely family um, who were just doing that. They were there on a long-term basis. They'd gone up the, into the mountains of the back of Nepal, a place called Jumla, and they were, one, they were running animal health training courses because that's how they got into the country. But while they were there, they were also making disciples. They were also communicating Christ through what they were doing. Um, and look, that could well be an option for many of you. You might not be a preacher, but you may have skills and abilities. You may have a qualification um, that enables you to open doors to go into nations where someone who's going as a preacher would not get in. Anyway, so that's vocational missions. And so I went there twice um, in 1999 as basically to help out run some animal health training camps there. Um, but while I was there, I got to see the heart behind the missions there. I got to see some incredible areas of poverty and also then some incredible things that were happening in Christ in Nepal um, through what the missionaries there were doing. Just before I leave my own missional story and to get on to why and look at the chapter of John, um, I just want to note that sometimes the little things you do um, can be just as moving and just as effective as some of the big things. Yes, I went there, I helped with some animal health training camps. But you know what? I'm also a bit of a juggler. Quite a good juggler. Well, not good, but oh. I've thrown them all away now, but I can juggle. And when I was there, I would pick up some rocks from the ground and I spent so long entertaining the kids by juggling. If they didn't run away when I picked up a rock, which did happen sometimes, um, they would just be fascinated. And the other thing I did was I carried a guitar with me. And these guys had never seen a white person with a guitar before. And I'm, I'm a moderately okay guitar player. But to them, I was like a rock star. So I would, I just, I spent hours entertaining kids by juggling and by playing the guitar. Because I mean, there's not many people who were crazy enough to uh, carry a guitar into the mountains of Nepal. Um, yeah, it, probably a little bit silly, but hey, God used it to His glory. 
So that is my missional story. Let's get back on to why missions. And as I say, we've looked at the first three Gospels and all of them have something about going into all the nations or going into all the world. Um, but if we read the final chapter of John, it doesn't contain that. It doesn't have the so-called Great Commission. But however, I believe as we look at the story deeply, we can get why missions out of the final chapter of John in, in a deeper way. And so the story on John is that the disciples, they all go fishing. Most of them are fishermen by trade. So they go fishing, um, catch some fish. Um, Jesus appears to them sitting around having a campfire. And let's pick it up from verse 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he's talking about the fish there. Yes, Lord, he said, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. So here we can find why missions? And it's to do with the motivation. You see, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me more than the fish? And love needs to be our motivation for missions. Love for God and love for the neighbours. If we read in the Gospels in Luke chapter 10, um, someone asked Jesus, hey, what's, what's the most important um, of all the commands? And Jesus replies with this, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And so here we have love being our motivation for missions. And if we keep on reading that story and Luke, the guy actually asks, well, who is my neighbor. And so we then get the story of the Good Samaritan. And I'm not going to read the whole story. I'm sure most of you have heard it before. If you haven't, it's in Luke 10 uh, from 29 onwards. But the gist of it is a man is beaten. He's in trouble. He needs help. And there's a priest and there's a a teacher of the law, they walk past religious people, they walk past and they ignore him. Uh, but then there is a Samaritan who is actually the enemy of the Jews. He goes past, he has compassion on him, he helps him. And at the end, in Luke 10 36, Jesus asks the question Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. So if we're thinking about this from a mission point of view, who is our neighbor? Our neighbor is anyone in need of our help, anyone who we are able to assist and we can assist. That is our neighbor. So from a missional point of view, um, the world is our oyster. There are so many people in need and we need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit in order to know who to help and how to help. But we have to have love and compassion for people for us to be able to reach out and meet these needs, reach out and love our neighbours who are overseas. And look, love has to be our motivation. In fact, if you read 1 Corinthians 13, it's a whole chapter about love. But you see, you can go on missions for many reasons. I was talking to a mission organization. I said, well, a lot of people, they just want it as a, a sort of an adventure holiday kind of thing. Let's go on a short-term mission instead of going on a holiday. Other people, they just want a ticker box. But, you know, love needs to be the motivation. Let's read 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3. The whole chapter is applicable, but this is probably the one that's most applicable to missions. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, if I do not have, it profits me nothing. 
But you know what? It's actually not hard to love. And I actually bet that a whole bunch of these people who just wanted to go on a holiday as they saw what God was doing in those nations, that he stirred their hearts and he put love in their hearts. He put compassion in their hearts for these people. Um, He's gotten to show some photos from Nepal now of some of the people there. And I mean, God's put a a real passion for these people on my heart um, as well. And I don't, as I say, I don't know what the future holds. It may be a completely different part of the world. But, you know, love is uh, motivation. Let's go back to John chapter 21. Let's go to verse 16 now. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. So we talked about this love thing. Love needs to be the motivation. But then what does he say? He says, tend my sheep. And if we look back at Luke chapter 15, we hear the story of the lost sheep. Jesus says in verse 4, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And here by Jesus saying, tend my sheep, he's referring the sheep are the people of God. And we need to go and find a lost sheep. And yes, there are lost sheep in New Zealand. There's plenty of opportunity for um, outreach in New Zealand to find the lost sheep, but there's also lost sheep in overseas places. So if we combine the story of the lost sheep with the great commission of go into all the world, um, then we can see that why go on missions? It's because Jesus, he loves the lost. He's passionate about the lost. And he commands us that we are to go and find his lost sheep. So going back to John 21, there's actually three exchanges between Jesus and Peter, where Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes, I love you. And then Jesus said, well, feed my sheep. And so and we've already looked at what that means with missions about it has to be motivated for, by love and the fact that feeding my sheep while well, we go and we leave the 99 to go and find the one lost sheep. So the final thing I want to look at in this chapter is found in verse 19. Um, and it's just two words that Jesus says to Peter and it's this, follow me. And in regard to missions, that is crucial. We need to be following Jesus and we need to be following the leading of the Holy Spirit if we're wanting to be effective in missions. In fact, if we're wanting to be effective in outreach in New Zealand or anywhere, we need to be following God and following the leading of the Holy Spirit um, because we need his wisdom, we need his guidance, and we need people to be touched by Jesus living inside of us. So So follow me is what Jesus says and in relation to mission it's critical. So I hope as you can see today what we've done is we've looked at missions. We've looked at why missions should be important to us. One, Jesus tells us we should go but two, he tells us that we need to love our neighbour and who are our neighbours? Our neighbours are the people in need. And look, Don't underestimate what you can bring to the table. You may not be a preacher, but you might have skills that on the mission field are invaluable. You might be able to juggle and just spend your time entertaining kids by juggling. Gosh, that's all I did. I mean, to be honest, I really don't know if much of the veterinary stuff um, sunk in, but I'm sure I touched those people's hearts. But anyway, I hope after watching this, you have a greater understanding of missions, why missions is important, and maybe even an inkling of something that you can do towards missions. 
Lord, I thank you for everyone who is watching. I pray you would spark something in their heart that they would become passionate about the things you are passionate about and passionate about reaching the world for Jesus Christ. I bless them abundantly. I thank you that they've taken this time to listen and pray that your Holy Spirit would come upon them right now. Bless you heaps. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for watching. There's going to be a subscribe button right there and there's going to be another video to watch just up there.